Here's a picture of Selena Gomez. You can see for her frame when she has more weight on her body that some people would want to think, oh, she's an endomorph, but actually it's just an overweight mesomorph. To determine whether you are an endo, ecto, or meso, I have a little trick. Hey, what's up everyone? It's Christine with Gage Girl Training, an international online meal planning and coaching service. And today we're going to talk about how to determine what your body type is. So stay tuned and let's get started. All right, so for those of you who caught my first video on this series on female fat loss for the different body types, it may have been pretty obvious for some of you what body type you fell into. Others, it may not have been. Just a quick recap of that video. We determined that there are three main somatotypes for people. They are the ectomorph, endomorph, and mesomorph. Ectomorphs tend to be typically skinny, lightly muscled, small joints, low body fat without trying very hard, long arms, have a difficulty gaining weight, high metabolism, and tend to be hyperactive and have a hard time gaining muscle. Recap on the mesomorphs, they are naturally muscular, tend to have a medium to large size joints, naturally strong, broad or square shoulders. Losing fat is relatively easy for them. They have an efficient metabolism. They can gain muscle pretty easily and they respond quickly to exercise. And lastly, the endomorphs tend to have a smooth round body. They do gain muscle easily, but they tend to be underdeveloped. High levels of body fat may be common, small shoulders, high waist, large hips, creating a pear-like physique. A slower metabolic rate, attacks of tiredness and physique, and they lose weight very slowly. If it was not obvious what body type you fell into, we're gonna think about a few more factors to help you understand where you fit in. So the first thing we wanna talk about, number one, is metabolism. If you think about what happens if you eat the wrong foods, or if you just kinda like go on a hiatus, or you go like on a lazy holiday of some sort, if you were able to lose that weight pretty rapidly, if you change your diet and some exercise, you're you're most likely a mesomorph if you struggle to lose those extra pounds and you feel like you're eating pretty clean, you are most likely an endomorph. But if you just don't put on any weight and are lucky, you are most likely an ectomorph. The other thing we want to take a look at aside of metabolism to help determine your body type is your eating habits. If you can eat a lot of food and you are still thin, you are an ectomorph. If you eat pretty light, and you appear thin and healthy, you're most likely a mesomorph. And if you consume pretty few calories and you're still appearing heavy, you are most likely an endomorph. Number three, the size of your joints and bones. To determine whether you are an endo, ecto, or meso, I have a little trick. It's the wrist trick. So you wanna take your wrist, try to put two fingers all the way around. So if you can put two fingers around here and if it just like perfectly lines up, you are most likely a mesomorph. If it's loose, like if it's loose, your fingers may even overlap. You're probably an ectomorph. If your fingers um, don't even touch, like if it's like loose, you're probably an endomorph. So again, if your middle finger overlaps your thumb, you're probably small and you're an endomorph. Think back to your adolescence, a time before your metabolism impacted your body as you grow older, which makes people more prone to lifestyle change. Looking at pictures of yourself when you were younger is very helpful. I think there's a few common misconceptions that people trip themselves up on. The first one is people who are mesomorphs thinking they are endomorphs. So in these photos, these are a few examples of some celebrities who are actually mesomorphs, but because they are overweight at different stages of their life for whatever reason, it all happens to the best of us sometimes. Being an overweight mesomorph does not mean you are an endomorph. When mesomorphs gain weight, they tend to gain it pretty evenly, and that does mean that they will have bigger hips, bigger thighs, they will also have bigger stomachs, bigger arms, and just because your butt and your thighs are getting bigger, it doesn't mean you're an endomorph. You can just be a mesomorph that is overweight. And these are examples of celebrities who fit that criteria. This is Aubrey O'Day. You can take a look at her body shape. 
You can see that she gains weight pretty evenly everywhere, but when she's leaner, you can see a more athletic mesomorph body structure. Another good example of this actually is Kate Upton. Most people would think that she's an endomorph, but she's actually just a mesomorph. Her natural frame is pretty athletic. She can gain weight easily. She can lose weight easily. When she is leaner and in shape, you can see that her hips do not remain preferentially larger than her shoulders. Here's a picture of Selena Gomez. And you can see for her frame, when she has more weight on her body, that some people would want to think, oh, she's an endomorph, but actually it's just an overweight mesomorph. The other thing is if you're confused between meso and endo. Other confusions could be if you're confused if you are an ecto or a meso. It's pretty straightforward because ectomorphs have a very high metabolism. These pictures are examples of clients that I have trained who are ectomorphs. You can see that these ladies who put on a nice amount of muscle on their body, they had to eat way more food than they were comfortable with at first. Some of them are distance runners, some of them just have a very high metabolism and were shocked at the fact that they were eating so much more food, were actually getting smaller and smaller and smaller in the waist. This photo I have right here, this client, by week one she started at a 27 inch waist went down to a 25 inch waist in only three weeks. And I had her eating 1.5 times the amount of food she normally ate. Um, she was a very busy working professional. This person was probably eating, man, like maybe 1100 calories a day. We had her up to 2,500 calories a day. And in eating 2,500 calories a day for three weeks, we were able to drop her waist by two inches because now we are burning body fat and we're not burning muscle. We're giving her enough fuel to fuel her workouts. And a few other notable ectomorph body transformations. Now for endomorphs, endomorphs will keep their curves as they lean out. Obviously I've left examples before of people like Kim Kardashian being endomorphs, but if you're an endo, if you're a true endo, like you're one of those people that were just born with a butt. Like you just have it. You are blessed with your assets and you got them. And the, the thing is, the take home message that I wanna leave everybody with is that everyone has the potential to get in great, amazing shape. So what's that mean? That means that like if you are a curvier person, I think it's just good to accept the fact that you're never going to have like a willowy figure. And there's nothing wrong with that because even if you did, you probably would have like damaged your metabolism to get to that level. And every single person has a healthy physique that's attractive inside of them. And it's just a matter of training the right way, following it with proper nutrition to allow yourself to embrace that and see that. I do think training for your body type is so, so important because there are techniques that you can employ very easily that, that will help you. And it will actually help you make changes because you may be doing things that just will not work for you just because you have a friend who does it or maybe your trainer does it. If your trainer has never considered your somatotype with your program, I highly suggest you go to gagegirltraining.com and check out the training plans I have for the different body types. You can do them at home or in the gym. They're very straightforward, excellent guides to help you with your goals. So if there's any other questions or concerns, you can always leave a comment below or email me directly, christine at musclegauge.com. So take care and have a great day.